I will uh, have um, um, impressed. <laughs> so let's uh, begin with uh, the agenda. It's uh, I will talk a little bit about uh, the history. What makes Munin very um, unique? We'll see that it makes it also really unique, but in not a very good way. What makes uh, unique in 2.0, it's the version that got in the Wheezy, uh, and it's very interesting. We also will also see um, how, according to uh, the new features of 2.0, you can scale much more the Munin install from uh, the 1.4 uh, package. And we'll see also uh, the limitation of uh, 2.0. I mean, since now you can scale quite well, I mean, theoretically, you can scale really well. Practically, well, we'll see. We still have some big, big issues very different from the one in 1.4, but still. And I will present rapidly the roadmap for 2.2, but hopefully uh, is released this year. Well, that's a challenge. Uh, thing is, if you have any questions, I will stop at uh, 10, and we will have 15 minutes for questions just after. So, a brief history. I mean, Munin was born in 2002. It was named uh, LRD. I, mean, I didn't know that fact before. I, mean, I just knew it because I researched for the presentation. <coughs> and it's a uh, not well known fact, but I mean, some code, I mean, most code, still dates from that day. So, it's quite important to see the issues when changing code, I mean, it's more like geology. You have every every layers, you want to add a functionality, one layer, new functionality, one layer, but well, I mean, you all know them. So I hacked uh, zooming for 1.2 in 2007. I mean, uh, 1.2 one was very static. And well, I maintained it in my own private uh, um, place. And uh, in 2009, 1.4 came out, and I asked if I could send my patch to Munin. And well, they got uh, accepted. And from uh, 2009 un until uh, 2011, so I was uh, slow slowly gaining ground in the Munin community until now, where, well, I, mm, I just took over uh, the leadership from the previous uh, team. Um, it didn't happen officially, but it just, it's just the way it is. And so in 2002, I released uh, 2.0, thanks to uh, Holder, who said, hey, you have to release now, otherwise, I mean, you will release in 10 years, and so thanks to him. So thing is, was uh, very, very um, hectic at the early days of uh, 2.0, because I realized uh, that the uh, biggest um, point was, uh, since it wasn't released, we didn't have many testers, and since uh, we didn't have many testers, I didn't want to release it, since uh, I still have some bugs that uh, came out and so on. So thanks to Holger, we broke the cycle. And uh, we released uh, in 2012. It's interesting since um, it's 10 years since uh, it's born. And someone said uh, every software gets good in after 10 years. Well, maybe. <laughs> and it's in Wheezy since uh, September 2012. Um, 12, and it's um, in stable since Wizzy get got out. So in 2013, I released 
uh, 2.1. It's an unstable uh, branch because uh, he, he I didn't want to have the same problems as uh, with uh, 2.0, is li lack of tester, so I just packaged something, packaged the development branch and released it. It's unstable. Normally it works, but well, it's unstable. You know what unstable means. And the biggest thing is the internals will change in the, uh, in the 2.1 uh, lifetime. So, and I said October 2013 is target for release 2.2, but time will tell. I mean, if you don't fix timelines, uh, deadlines, I mean, you will never release thing. So, better be late than never. Okay. So the, the very simple uh, design principle of Munin is, it's, uh, I really love his um, uh, quote from Alan Kay. Uh, it's simple, things should be simple, and complex things should be possible. That's exactly the motto of Munin. Munin makes simple things simple, and complex things, impossible. <laughs> it's very easy to use. It has a sane out-of-box uh, <laughs> behavior because uh, when you install it on the server, it automatically starts monitoring. And if it's not, it's a bug. I mean, please report it. <laughs> and um, it has a complete plug-and-play infrastructure. I mean, uh, com compared to others, I mean, you the only thing you need is to de declare the, the node because uh, well broadcasting uh, on the um, um, local network is not very practical in my point of view so it's the only thing you need to to say you have to pull this node and all the node will just send all the config uh, to the master so I mean graph are growing thing is our user, the vast majority of our user just have one server to monitor, and it's the same the Munin install is on it. I mean, that's, uh, that's why uh, the default Munin are always targeted at these users, since if you have a bigger install, well, I mean, you already know how to uh, change config files, usually. And as I say, some are running bigger install, and these are the one that interest me very much in 2.2. Since uh, well, we do address really well the one node install type, but for uh, for bigger install, we uh, we have very much problems. I mean, we improve very much in from. 1.4 to 2.0, but now we hit other limits that we will discuss about just after. Okay, so new features. I mean, we really have now a full CGI implementation. I mean, the one in 1.5, you should not use it. I mean, it works sometimes, and it's bugged every time. And uh, so, it has also a full fast CG CGI implementation. But this is very important to have adequate performance, so you don't reload everything. Um, the biggest selling point is it has complete integration with ARCRD. We will talk ab more about that later, but this is the um, uh, main uh, issue when scaling. Because uh, RD is very nice, but doesn't scale very well in its native without I mean without RRCRD. And thing is, when you use RRCRD, there are some guidelines that I will uh, describe later, and uh, you should not do what I mean. It has native SSH transfer. I mean, uh, well, it's before you use a plain TCP. Uh, um, uh, connector 4949 and you could use TLS but most people didn't and with native as such uh, usually people 
also already used SSH on their installs. So setting a, um, SSH transfer for them, it's quite easy. Whereas uh, having a TLS thing is, you have to have a certificate and so on and so on. It's quite much complicated. Um, it avoids open Newport, as I said, and uh, it's secure. It's usually more integrated than um, uh, in setups. The other uh, very big feature is async proxy. It's uh, something that um, sits on the node and that pulls the node autonomously and stores uh, locally on the node and the um, uh, the minim update will then connect to the async uh, the client part and just replay the spool that he uh, spooled just before. So it has a very interesting uh, features. If if you have uh, some nodes that have loose connection, for example, you want to monitor a remote uh, location that has um, sometimes a no network or whatever. Since it's locally spooling, I mean, when you connect, you will gather everything that uh, was um, uh, collected. Meanwhile, you didn't uh, connect. So the those uh, little white bars you are accustomed <coughs> to are gone. It also speed up spool, even for a local network. Since um, it delegates uh, all the polling and the waiting for plugins uh, to the async proxy. I mean, the data collection from the minimum update goes really faster. It only replaces a lock, uh, lo lock text file. So thing is, when you have a big cluster, it sometimes makes sense to use async since, well, <coughs> uh, the, the fixed um, five minutes for a minute update is still a hard one and you cannot go further. Yep. And one less known thing about async proxy is it can um, pull at various update rates. I mean, if you, sp uh, if you have one plugin that, uh, that says, I want to be polled by uh, every one hour, I mean, async will only pull it one hour and most interesting part, if, if you have a plugin that says, I want to be polled every 10 seconds, async will poll it 10 seconds and still send uh, every five minutes all the data back to the minute update. So you won't have uh, real time um, uh, information, but you have very precise information. So now uh, we, we go to uh, scalability. That's the biggest focus on uh, 2.0 because um, the first one was uh, the zooming part and zooming just um, uh, showed that, uh, well, you, you can have huge da uh, data file since it doesn't, uh, it's not very useful to zoom on one year history if, if you don't um, keep the finer granularity in RD uh, one year back. So uh, that will be scaling the data at the end. Usually what people want is adding more nodes. That's the most common uh, scaling issue that we, we can. Inside the node, you can also have a, a huge number of plugins. Some have very, very large installation, especially when you start to use uh, SNMP because uh, SNMP is done by one host to monitor many, many um, remote um, uh, routers or uh, SNMP agents. And uh, the thing is, some also have slow plugins. I mean, I, uh, we, alre we already uh, discussed about uh, the minion update should take less than five minutes, otherwise, well, bad thing happens. That's one point. And that's a hard rule. If human in updates take more than five minutes, the really bad thing happens, mostly white bars. And so if you have many, many plugins, and many, many uh, plugins take uh, quite a long time to, to pull, 
since it's all synchronous, the fact is, well, it, it can go, even if you parallelize uh, very much, it sometimes it still um, goes uh, quite slowly. And if you multiply number of plugin with long reference time with uh, many nodes, uh, you have you usually pass the five minute bar. And and is scaling the data usually that's with um, zooming part. I mean, usually one uh, many many people ask for. Well, I can zoom one year ago, but I mean I only have one bar per day. I mean, I mean I don't care about the average for one day. So here is a you you can natively have uh, much uh, more data inside. We'll see more on that later. So scaling the master to have a um, big install. The first thing is use Path CGI. I mean, default is front base. Remember, default is for the typical user that have only one node and one server. Any anyone that has more than, let's say, five nodes, should really go the CGI road, and not really CGI but fast CGI, because uh, it's um, I mean uh, the current road is you generate every kind of graphic and it's just pointless. <coughs> I mean it's very simple, but it's pointless. As I said, you you have to use RDD because the thing is, uh, RDD is very very nice. It's a very nice piece of software, but it has only one main problem is. It's so efficient that it um, I it, ri um, it writes only the, the very little part of uh, the file, and to the underlying um, uh, IO subsystem, uh, already updates when you have a big one. It feels just like random IO. I mean, when I say random IO, it's real random IO. I mean, almost cri cryptographically secure. I mean, when I when I asked about um, uh, some um, uh, storage vendor, he said, okay, where you run on Mayo, where we can do that. And I plugged the in with a big install on it. I said, what's that? Yeah, random IO. Yeah, not that random usually. <laughs> and uh, the people of uh, RD are well, well aware of it. And they even designed Eric RD that is specially designed to make this random IO buffered and to make it like normal random IO. And it's called, uh, there is a slide, you can uh, uh, you can uh, Google it, it's Eric HD Escape IO Hell. It's re really well described and to understand what's uh, the <coughs> behind Eric HD. And it even works on SSD because uh, usually random IO, okay, no problem just use SSD, but storage vendor said, no, no problem, we just put an SSD. Pr thing is, after, in my test, after um, four hours uh, with yeah, big install, I mean, all the SSD were just offline because uh, too many IOs, because it writes, 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 writes a lot. So SSD is, Interesting, but not only for us. Thing is, the um, RKRD has only one very big drawback: is you should never ever uh, read from the RD file, especially in Chrome, because if you read on demand, it's perfect. It only flush uh, the file you're reading, and if you read it in Chrome, by default, I mean you will. Uh, read the whole install, and that's exactly the same as not using RRKRT, so use it. Thing is, for Minin, you need lots of RAM, because uh, as I said, we have RRKRT, but uh, the more RAM you put at RRKRT, the, uh, the longer you can keep the, the, the spool, and so the thing is, uh, uh, it can it writes very less often, and that's very interesting. 
If you have lots of RAM, you can multiply the number of workers. It means you, I mean, obvious, if you have, um, since meaning is very, very much I.O. bound, either so for waiting for nodes or waiting for the I.O. subsystem, if you have many workers, usually it, um, it uh, helps a lot because every worker is a single threaded. Uh, thing is, but do never ever swap. Right, that's obvious. But thing is, um, Munin is designed to use all the memory of, it of its workers. So if you only swap a little thing, then there is no, uh, how to say, there is no lost memory. You cannot swap I, uh, for people who know the swappiness setting. It means uh, swapping before, uh, I mean, trading some application memory to, to uh, file cache memory. That's not a good idea in Munin since all the, um, uh, the application memory is useful at one point. Uh, yeah, oops, that's okay. Uh, on the nicer, you have really to watch out for shared hardware because uh, Munin is very nice and it loves to annihilate any hardware you put it on it because, uh, uh, well, it has, um, it's designed to be very scalable and you can launch as many processes as you want. We'll see the some kind of some limitation just after, but it's designed to be very scalable. But the, the controller is not in very efficient manner. I mean, it's not very clever. It just use and goes on your system. So uh, for the record, I had um, uh, uh, the storage vendor that was uh, uh, mutualized. Uh, with uh, all the um, uh, all the application of uh, the, um, uh, the thing, and when we wrote to it, I mean, 99% of the IOPS were delivered to the Munion server. So let's imagine what uh, stays for the others. Not much. So we put it on dedicated hour. It goes slower, but well, other applications are happier. The um, thing I said before is use the async proxy, even if you don't have a special need on it. Thing is, it will um, it will enable a very fast collection, as all the <laughs> I/O time, all the wait time is absorbed directly by the async daemon. You your meaning update almost doesn't wait at all. I mean, it only connects, reads a file on the um, on the server, and disconnects. So, for usually typical um, uh, polling time is about uh, 10 to uh, 15 seconds. With muninasing, typical time is uh, about one second to mostly two seconds, depends on. Uh, but uh, you have a 10 factor, and that's very interesting when you want to scale. Because it lowers the uh, number of update workers needed. I said uh, Immunin uses lots of RAM, okay? But usually you don't want to use RAM for Immunin update. You prefer to use RAM for uh, the restitution part, for the graphs, for uh, the HTML, which we will speak about later. And uh, so Immunin update, you would just want it to be very quick. And so uh, if you don't have the it's if it's not IO bound from network anymore, it's only CPU bound, and you don't want to have more than the CPU uh, on your hardware since otherwise it's useless anyway. And the thing that is a side effect, but it's very nice. It's if your Munin updates is very slow, happens, and we speak about uh, the five minute hard limit. All the async uh, enabled nodes will not have any data loss. You will have delays in integrating the, um, uh, the data, but you won't have these uh, infamous white bars that 
most of you already experienced at least once. That was for a um, uh, for the node. As I said, you have some have a huge number of plugins. I mean, uh, the biggest install I saw is about 1,000 plugins. Wow. It's very interesting also as async because uh, it has the fork option and async knows it will just uh, prior to mm, uh, to async, the menin update was doing it very sequentially, and one was a plugin. Well, to have it in less than uh, five minutes, it has to be quite fast since uh, you it's not the only node that is uh, pulled. In async, with the fork option, um, each plugin will be uh, asked in its own process. So uh, if you have long uh, running plugins as, uh, as, uh, as just uh, after, you also can use the fork option. You, mm, before the plugin can usually they pull themselves either in cron and they just read the status back. I mean, uh, the, that was the official way of doing it in 1.4. But since async does exactly that, in 2.0, just use async. I mean, it's uh, standard and it's just make use your uh, uh, of uh, whatever you, you use. But for uh, the node, usually um, the only problem the node has when you have many, many plugins is the starting of the node is typically serialized. That's when you have 1,000 plugins, it's a big problem. Okay, so uh, now we're scaling the data. Uh, as I said before, zooming uh, brought the need of having precise data uh, very far away in, in time. And to keep more data in RD, it's very, very easy. In 2.0, you have a new, uh, a new option, it's graph data size. You already had um, you already had it in uh, in uh, 1.4, but it was global. Now it's per plugin. It's also global, but uh, you can uh, precise it per plugin. And uh, uh, actually, it's designed to be per uh, uh, per field, but it doesn't work. It's we we it has it's bugged and it mostly works per plugin. That works well. But it only works on RD create, so there is uh, an external tool to move it. Uh, uh, to I wrote a tool that is uh, called RD copy to move from some data uh, from a small RD to a bigger RD. But that's not part of uh, core menu. And uh, when you created it. Uh, it's everything is handled automatically by by RD, and uh, and uh, it's uh, it's very fast. And RD, as I said, is very 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 efficient. But beware, it can use very much space. I mean, I had uh, one one person who wanted to have a f ten second precision for two years. Wow. It's about uh, 500 uh, megabyte per RD, and so per line in Munin, big data. You can also increase RD precision. It's uh, it's called super sampling that uh, works with without uh, Munin async. If you put Munin async, it will do the job for you. I will. Just go a little faster since uh, I my time is also mo almost up. Uh, and uh, uh, fingers okay. Uh, yeah, a biggest a bigger thing is if you modify the RD size, always have um, the array increased because uh, when you want uh, the <coughs> to have the graphs, uh, if you Take huge, for example, I mean there is a, a setting that, that is huge. It's not very, n the, this setting is not very nice because 
it only has uh, the um, uh, maximum precision for two years, but it doesn't have any array. And array are part of uh, Munin's ability to reply very fast on a yearly graph, for example. So if you, uh, it's pre-consolidation for yearly values. So the ideal way is you know the size of the graph in your templates, and if you have one array per pixel in the, the graph outputted, it goes the fastest, since uh, already doesn't even have to interpolate the data. Uh, so now the limitation of 2.0. The CGI of HTML is very, very, very ugly. I don't know. I don't know if uh, many, many of uh, you tried with big install, but the practical limit is about um, between uh, 150 and 200 nodes. After that, it's very, very slow, and it's slow on reload because uh, uh, the the whole configuration is uh, stored in a big storage storable file that is um, uh, that is reload and the most of the time is is um, took by torable dot relo uh, reload so I cannot do much about it we'll see how we I plan to do it and the UI itself doesn't ver uh, it's not very scalable I mean you all you all know the um, default UI, so now you have your cluster. Just imagine 1,000 nodes inside. It's well, it's a little bit flat and not very. Uh, all the nodes are essentially on the overview, and it's very static. And it's not what the one does expect in 2013, because well, I mean we all have uh, this. Uh, web app and is fine shining with uh, very dynamic stuff and ours is not very dynamic I agree same as if you um, you know the comparison page I mean if every node of a group and every graph just imagine say on 1000 node 1000 plugin your fireworks f won't have any memory anymore and the last thing is it lacks proper RCL. I mean, for bigger than install, I mean, uh, usually you want to delegate uh, monitoring to sub subsystem. And you don't want people to see everything because they will be overwhelmed by information. And, well, <coughs> that's, uh, that's a problem. So I'll just go very fast. That's uh, my last slide. For so for 2.2, I mean uh, it will be one, uh, it will be integrated in 2.1, and uh, when it's stable, it will become 2.2. It's moved from the whole story build thing to uh, SQL based, and the SQL based will be DBI based because we are still in Perl, and it will be SQL light by default because uh, we really want the uh, uh, nice out of box install and remember our user. Our a very of the one uh, node type. And if you want, you can do Postgres SQL. And if you want, you can do whatever DBI supports. <coughs> it's just up to you. It will enable dynamic uh, HTML because, uh, well, we're not in 2001 anymore. But that will require a deep rewrite of the code. As I said uh, before, I mean you have many, many accessors to the storable inside the, the core. And but since it was a big storable, it was native Perl data structure. So for whatever reason, uh, many code doesn't use the accessors. And they use it in a typical Perl way that makes it very difficult to translate to SQL. So that's the challenge. And just to be completely crystal clear, the data will stay in R the data that is in RD will stay in RD. I want I don't want to put the timestamp value inside SQL. That's not the point. Uh, 
Uh, yes. Uh, well, uh, I'll just up. We will have a complete node <coughs> push uh, feature, and the the the, uh, the node can push um, on uh, the master. In order, well, to have um, to break this five-minute pause standard, so you can put whenever you want, every second if you want. And uh, well, I. The thing is, uh, it will enable very fine um, uh, uh, precision, and my goal is to be as good as Collect D. If and well, if you have a uh, that's a little blurb on the new uh, HTML5 UI. With uh, so I normally let's. I speed it at the end so you have a little time for questions, if you want. Uh, with this, uh, okay. Uh, is it possible uh, with this new architecture uh, to? Uh <coughs> Sorry, I just missed the question. <laughs> Sorry. The, the SQL one, you mean? Or? No, I just wrote it down, so I'm sorry for. <laughs> the async or? Yeah. Uh, do you fork uh, uh, the plugins? Uh, the architecture is still fork uh, plug the plugins every time? Or uh, uh, is it possible to run a plugin and keep it long running and just uh, feedback some values? Actually, as, as, as you also mentioned, collect the which uh, uh, builds on this architecture. I um, okay. Um, it's um, I designed the, the a new extension, a new verb for plugins. It's called stream, and uh, this is a you just launch the plugin. You ask for a uh, for uh, for crook fig, and then you ask for stream, and when the plugin quits, it means I mean it just sends periodically values at a rate he wants to. It's a uh, it's very uh, it's designed to capture, for example, the um, output of VM stat, and you can uh, you can do cat VM stat uh, pipe oak something, and well that's your plugin output, and it will stay in memory. And the plugin will kill himself when the configuration change. Mm -hmm. That's the, the design. But the problem is, um, I didn't put it in 2.2 because I won't have time to do it. But that's uh, the, the way uh, it's done. But basically, uh, the architecture of uh, forking exec a plugin is will be at the core of uh, Munin. It won't be, for example, a DL, um, uh, dot .so or uh, th that uh, you will charge in, or a dot .pm, that you will charge in the um, uh, Munin memory space. That's, that's not something I want to. This was the thing uh, uh, which uh, I really liked Munin and used it in 1.2 or whatever, but uh, it had uh, scaling problems uh, with regards to fork. Th so that was one of the reasons <laughs> I have to uh, change to another system. <coughs> So I was a happy Munin user, and then uh, suddenly I fell uh, because of the scaling issues, uh, and I moved to a, a PNP for Nagios, uh, for Nagios. And uh, that's one question I want to ask: uh, is about how, because with all this data that is aggregated in Munin, then you can do proactive uh, monitoring in the sense like sending alerts if there's trends. Uh, that goes one way or the other way, or if you hit certain threshold. But uh, do you plan on having better integration with uh, uh, alert systems 
than you have currently? Actually, the, the, the point of um, uh, Nagios, I mean, we, uh, we had a very much problem with, um, because uh, NSCA uh, changed their, his, uh, its interface uh, lately. And th the thing is, we have something called the uh, Munion limits. And, well, it sends uh, our writing and so on, but it doesn't uh, do it very well. So uh, the integration in other systems, such as Nagios, uh, Isinga, or whatever, is very, very high on my top list because I don't want to re-implement Nagios. I mean, it's I want to focus on data gathering and data keeping. I mean, I'm more in interested in replacing something like a PHP for Nagios than Nagios itself. Because the limit, minimum limits, for example, it only has, you know, it only do tri threshold. Like, if this hit a certain value, then one. Whereas I'm also interested in questions like, okay, usually this file system is growing at a 1% rate every day, and suddenly it grows at like 50%. I want a warning there. Uh, uh, that's, you know. Exactly. But that's, uh, that's uh, something that is even offered by uh, RRD right now. And uh, I also have it uh, on my future roadmap, but well, <laughs> I'm I'm taking the problem that our user uh, user are facing right now, and but everyone is welcome to help. I, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. Okay. Um, time is up, so I guess you have to ask your questions um, uh, after the talk and. Yeah, thank you. Ju uh, yeah. Just uh, uh, there is a um, uh, buff session this afternoon. If you have some question more specific, just come and I'll be glad to answer. Yeah. So thanks, Master Chef. <laughs>